So you're thinking of obtaining a scan gauge 3. In this video, I'll be giving you a very honest review on whether you should or should not. I will also be explaining the gauges that I use, why I use them, and the reason uh, why I use them. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll also be showing you a hidden ODB2 port on the Ranger and the Mazda BT50 that will make this installation of the scan gauge really, really tidy and easier for you. Okay, before we dive into the video, um, let me just give you a brief lowdown of the vehicle that it's connected to. So I, I own a Ford Ranger, 3.2 litre diesel. It's a 2017 model and has done 90,000 miles. Um, I've decided to obtain this Scan Gauge 3 um, to keep a closer eye on some of the sensors and uh, gauges that are sent out via the ODB2 um, protocol. Okay, let me find a safe place to pull over. I'll switch the engine off and we'll dive into uh, aspects of this video. Okay, so in front of you, you can see my installation of the scan gauge. Stick around actually to the end of the video because I'll be showing you a hidden ODB2 port, certainly on the Ford Rangers, uh, that makes the installation a lot, lot tidier. Okay, so let's start the vehicle up so that uh, it fires up the actual scan gauge. There we go. So as you can see um, on uh, the first page, I've decided to display the um, exhaust gas temperature and the coolant temperature, along with the oil life, the AdBlue tank levels and boost pressure. For me, these are key gauges to um, display. So obviously your coolant temperature, the normal operating range for that is around about 80 degrees Celsius. Um, and I have an alert on that should it go a lot higher, which I'll explain near the end of the video. Equally, um, the EGT, the exhaust gas temperature, I've just started the vehicle over, so it is quite low. Um, the normal operating range for that is arguably around between three and 400 degrees Celsius. Celsius sorry. If you go above that, um, it could then uh, indicate a problem and it could indicate damage out of your in engine block to your turbo and could potentially fry your turbo. So it's useful to see those sort of temperatures, particularly if you're uh, running your vehicle hot or hard or towing heavy loads. Both of those temperatures are key to um, monitoring healthy operation of your vehicle. The oil life simply is what it is in a percentage. At mine is currently 87%, so I'm still good. And the add blue tank is uh, 100%. I've just topped that up. I do tend to keep that uh, quite top top. What I've noticed with the add blue tank in the past is if you wait for the warning light to come on on the dashboard, if you keep doing that, because of the way add blue works, it tends to crystallize in the tank. And for me, that caused a costly repair to the reductant heater in the AdBlue tank. Um, it was a Ford dealer um, specialist job. My local 4x4 workshop couldn't actually um, change it on my behalf. It required going to Ford and they cost me a considerable amount of uh, pounds to get that replaced. In the region of I think about £700. It was extortionate for what is just basically pig's piss crazy. The other uh, gauge that I've got there is the boost pressure. Um, I'm monitoring that one because whilst it's showing zero, um, it does actually go up when I'm dry over into around four five. I'm not quite sure if I've got the right gauge on that one. So I am monitoring it to see if it's any use whatsoever. Okay, just sticking uh, with some of the gauges then if we go on to screen two. There we go. So um, I like to keep an eye on the battery voltage for a variety of reasons. Um, sometimes I am running a, a dual battery operation. I've got a, uh, a fused cable running from the main battery through into the tub with my auxiliary battery charging system for whenever I go out and about off-roading or whatever. So I do like to compare uh, the state of charge, which you can see on the uh, right hand side. Um, of the battery which is currently sitting at 81 percent and i also like to see what the car is running at um, which as we can see is fluctuating there between 12 and 13. it does go as high as 14 and 
a half depending on how the battery is. The good thing with both of those, I suppose, and, and the amps down here is it's an indication of the alternator and if the alternator is actually working. Yes, it either works or it doesn't, I get that. But again, um, early heads up of uh, what's going on. Okay, and finally on the third screen within um, scan gauge, um, I'm monitoring the uh, tire pressure stop and these are X gauges, which I'll explain, um, are showing um, these values. Nonetheless, for me, even though they're a little bit all over the place, it's nothing to worry about. It's more of an indicative view of what's going on and if you have a slow puncture. Let's now look into the monitors that I've set up to alert me when I'm driving in real time and why I have them. So it's quite simple on scan gauge. If you go into settings, uh, go into monitor, and then I've set all these uh, monitors, for which as you can clearly see, you can, you can only have six. So the first one I've got set up is the coolant temperature. I've got it to alert me when it goes above um, 87 degrees, because like I say, the operating temperature uh, on this Ford Ranger 3.2 liter and the Mazda BTs is arguably about 80 odd degrees, give or take a degree or two. Clearly when the dial starts to move and starts to move into the red, um, it will start to move around about 86-ish. So that's okay, depending on how hard and how long you're driving that vehicle for and the external factors involved with that. However, once it starts going beyond that to 87 degrees, I want to start seeing alert. I want to know why that is, especially if I'm driving normally. Okay, the other one then, um, if we go back, is the ex engine uh, exhaust gas temperature. Now, like I've said there, same sort of thing. I want an alert for when that reaches over 420 um, degrees. I may change that to be quite honest, depending on what I see is the normal um, temperature for my normal daily, uh, daily drive. Um, I understand the, on average, the average operating temperature is in the region of around about between 200 to, to 430, 40 sort of degrees. Um, but I think when you start getting to the 430 mark, you're then at the upper end where it's starting to get hot and hot engine uh, exhaust gases going into the turbo can damage the turbo. So you wouldn't want to drive at a prolonged period of time at that high temperature. Um, so it's worthwhile having an alert and having a monitor set up for that. Whether or not 420 is the correct um, temperature, I'm not 100% sure yet. I think it is. Uh, if you have a view, please do leave a, a comment um, in the comment section below. But nonetheless, I've got that set at 420. Uh, and then finally, what I've got is I've got all the tire pressures set for around 33 degrees, yeah. So I, I am running around about 36. Um, if I have a slow puncture, that will start to drop. And of course, I can monitor that uh, through the third page. There we go. So I could see that in real time, but of course you don't. You're driving, you're concentrating on your driving. So worthwhile to have tire pressures uh, monitors in place. My particular vehicle, whilst it has a TPMS system on there, it just says your tire pressure is low. It doesn't tell you which one. So I've specifically set the same monitor across all four tires for around about 33 degrees, uh, 33 PSI, sorry. Um, so that will alert me with sufficient time, along, unless it's a complete blowout, um, if I have a slow puncture. So there you go. They are the alerts. It's very simple to set an alert. Hopefully you've seen that as, as we go along. You go um, into settings and then you just simply click on the monitors tab, press the alert that you want, um, and then you just choose all the gauges. And I won't go into the operation of the scan gauge because like I say, it is very straightforward um, to, to use without a manual. There are plenty of videos on there. Okay then, so let's uh, let's dive into the murky world of where and how this is fitted and I will show you that secret hidden ODB2 port. Okay then, looking at how this is uh, fitted, of course it comes with the, the, the window fitting thing and the magnetic uh, sticky to hold this and connect it to the, the window sticky thing, simple. I've then rerouted uh, re rather the cable through 
down the door seal and then under to the OD, OD uh, B port. So rerouting the door seal, through the cable through the door seal, through the little gap here and then through and underneath into the hidden OD B2 port, which I'll show you now. Okay, so here we are. I've taken the fuse cover off and what you can see clearly here is we've got the standard ODB2 port here. Now the trouble is, is the plug that comes with the scan gauge comes out to about here, which means that you can't put the fuse cover box back on cleanly unless you do some cutting here, which no, nobody wants to do. However, behind here, up around here, there is a small, well it's not small, it's a standard size, but a black ODB2 port, can't even say it, that you can plug it in and, and then neatly um, hide the cables away from. So let me just try and show you that now. So I can't quite see the camera um, and I know I'm shaking a lot with this but hopefully you can see where my finger is. There they are. The plug goes in here. There's, there it is, I'm feeling it with my finger there. That, that's where it plugs into. So there's a little port there, a little black, black one that you can plug it into. Really useful to know. And it makes the whole installation a lot, lot tidier. So when you go to put your fuse back, back on, like so, Again, very clean, very clean indeed. Okay. So is the scan gauge three actually worth buying? In short, I don't think it is actually, no. Not for the price tag anyway. If you can pick one up second hand on eBay or elsewhere, then perhaps maybe. The, the reason I don't think it's worthwhile buying is, well, it's a lot of money for what it actually is. Sure, it's a useful, display, it's very colourful, it's very bright, it's big, all the gauges are there. However, scan gauge do another one which is a lot smaller and a lot cheaper that does display the same information, probably less visually and you have to poke around a bit more. The other reason why I think it's probably not worth the money, certainly for me anyway, on the Ford Ranger and, and maybe the Mazda BT50 is that I wanted to monitor the oil pressure. Now on the Ford Ranger it's it's a binary switch so I found out it's either okay or it's not. There doesn't appear to be any real-time oil pressure monitoring capability which would be useful if you wanted to monitor the life and the health of the oil pump and other uh, factors. So for that reason perhaps not worth buying also. The scan gauge 3 Yes, it does allow you to look at the DTC codes to see if there's any errors, clear them, etc, etc. However, there are far cheaper tools and gadgets that also allow you to do that. So in short, I think it's a hefty price tag new um, for little gain, to be brutally honest. That being said, I do use it to monitor some gauges but to be quite honest I've gone six years without having it and it's been fine so more of a toy and a nice to have than a need to have okay so there you go then hopefully this video has been mega useful to you if it has do me a small favor please if you wouldn't mind um, liking and subscribing to the channel that would be really really helpful uh, alternatively if you've got any comments any questions any contradictions please do uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section below i promise i will get back to you okay thank you once again um enjoy yourself take care and i look forward to seeing you again on this channel <laughs>